Today, I'm going over some of the differences between the euphonium and the baritone and clear up any of the misconceptions that you might have about these two instruments. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's going on guys? I'm Aaron Campbell, helping musicians get better faster through performances, product reviews, and educational videos. And today I'm here at Buffet Crampon in Jacksonville, Florida, and they invited me to film this video so I can explain some of the differences between these two instruments. And before I dig too deep into the subject, I do want to remind you that I post new videos like this one every single week. So if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button for similar videos directly to you every single week. So like I said, these two instruments get mixed and matched and you know there's a lot of confusion of why it's different or if it's different or if they're the exact same thing. So we're gonna clear up some of those things. Now I'm not gonna dig too deep into like the historical reasons why or the cultural significance between the two instruments. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about a practical guide to these two instruments and how they exist right now. Now I will mention that both the euphonium and the baritone that I have right here are British style. These are kind of the standard if you're talking about a baritone or euphonium. These are what we're talking about, not the normal three valve bell forward baritone that you might have seen in like middle school band rooms or even some college marching bands still march them today. But yeah, so I remember when I first switched over to euphonium and I actually made district band. I was in eighth grade and I was walking around and it actually took me a really long time to register. I was wandering around. I was trying to figure out where I was supposed to go until my band director got a hold of me and she was like, where are you going? What are you doing? She actually got mad at me and I was like, well, I actually don't know where the baritone booth is. I, don't, I can't find baritone. There's no baritone booth. And she goes, oh, it's that one that says euphonium. They're the same thing. And that was kind of the beginning of my life of trying to figure out, are they the same? Aren't they the same? Why aren't they the same? Why are they the same? And all that kind of stuff. And then later in my professional life, answering that question constantly. And it wasn't until I got to grad school where I got to play a baritone on a regular basis in the JMU brass band that I got to really see what the difference between these two instruments was. So first, let's start with the similarities to the instruments and the things that are the same. Believe it or not, both of the instruments that you see in front of you have the exact same amount of tubing. So in terms of how much tube there is involved, it is the same length of tubing. That doesn't change. Now what also can be the same and one of the very common misconceptions is they can also have the same number of valves. There are three valve baritones, but there are also three valve euphoniums and four valve euphoniums and four valve baritones. So it's not the number of valves that determines if it's a baritone or euphonium. They can both have three or four. Another similarity, both can read bass clef, both can read treble clef. Just because you see one in treble clef or one in bass clef does not mean anything. In brass band, both of these are written in treble clef. And in uh, wind band, you'll see euphonium parts written in both bass clef and treble clef and baritone parts, vice versa. It's not what clef they read either. And finally, they both have the same range. They both play just as low and just as high as one another. So that can really confuse things as well. So in terms of playing and why they're different, it's actually in their function and how they're used. Though it's not common in wind band there are times where there are separate euphonium and baritone parts think about some of percy granger's literature he has separate parts like lincolnshire posey actually has a euphonium and a baritone part however in the brass band the baritone and the euphonium are both in the ensemble but they both play very different roles and that bridges us over to the differences between these two instruments now primarily and when you're thinking about things maybe as a composer or as a player and especially in the brass band the euphonium is more of an extension of the two tuba family, whereas the baritone is kind of an extension of the tenor horn family. So you're thinking of, you know, this being in very general terms, this being a lower high instrument, whereas this one is a higher low instrument. Another difference is the size. Obviously, as you can tell, baritone's a little bit smaller and euphonium being wider and bigger. And you wonder, well, if they have the same amount of tubing, how is that so? So it's actually in the construction of the instrument that gives it its difference in sound. So a baritone, if you look at it really closely, it doesn't really get much bigger until the bell. It kind of flares out once it gets to the bell. And we call that cylindrical wrapping. 
Whereas with a euphonium, it gradually gets bigger throughout the entire thing, or what we call conical, which is why the euphonium is so much bigger, is because it's gradually getting wider and wider and wider throughout the wrapping of the instrument. This will lead to the euphonium having a little bit of a darker, richer sound, but sounding more like a tuba than the baritone. So if you ever have to ask the question, what's the big difference? That's it, it's in the wrapping. Remember, baritone is cylindrical, whereas euphonium is conical. That's kind of the main difference. There's a bunch of others, obviously we went through them in the video, but that's the main difference. And that main difference leads to how we use it in the ensemble. Again, euphonium's gonna sound a little darker, a little richer. And the baritone is going to sound a little lighter playing the same thing. So hopefully that answers some of the questions that you might have about the differences and similarities between the euphonium and the baritone. And that actually leads me to my question of the day. What are some of your favorite euphonium and baritone name swapping stories? Maybe somebody didn't know the difference and they said, oh, it's the same thing, or maybe someone corrected a band director or something like that, or you got corrected yourself. Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, guys, that's all I've got for the differences between these two instruments. If you like this video, consider hitting that like button. And again, I post new videos like this every single week, so consider hitting that subscribe button. I wanna thank Buffet Crampon for letting me come here and film this video. And I would like to thank Besson for allowing me to play this 157 baritone. If you want more information on this baritone or any of the products that Buffet Crampon offers, a link will be in the description down below. But yeah, guys, thank you again for checking out this video. My name's Aaron, reminding you to be happy, but never satisfied. I'll see you next time.